Good people, I'm Dmitri, and just when you think that keyboards couldn't get any more innovative, and for the past few years they've been kind of stagnated with some almost pointless features being slapped on and calling it a day, and this is kind of what Corsair has been doing for a while, but I feel like we're reaching a point where some actually interesting innovation is happening, and this is exactly what we have here with the new K100. <laughs> Really the main highlight here with the K100 is the 4000 Hz polling rate and you think about the maximum polling rate that we've had so far on keyboards and peripherals, it's always been 1000 Hz, but now by end of 2021 we'll see 1000 Hz displays and right now 500 Hz displays are being tested. So having 4000 Hz polling on a keyboard isn't all that crazy, it gives us that future proofing direction. And also Corsair isn't the first one to do this, Razer just announced the Death Adder with 8000 Hz polling rate which is twice as fast as the keyboard, so yes peripherals are moving into that direction. I have not used a full-size keyboard in years, so this should be an interesting experience. And I do appreciate that Corsair's brand redesign is cohesive across products. So like there are 4,000 series cases, you can check out over here some of the elements in terms of design, like the K100 logo, the Corsair text, and some yellow accents on the product here are carried over into the keyboard side as well. Price-wise, you're looking at $230. Yes, it's going to be a turnoff for many, but let's face it, this is Corsair's flagship keyboard. What else are we expecting, right? I'm not a full-size keyboard guy at all, but the K100 has gauged my interest. Obviously, this thing is not going to be for everybody. It is the highest-end keyboard that Corsair offers. It is the most RGB they've ever implemented in the keyboard, plus, the really the selling point would be the 4000 hertz polling rate but in my gaming experience does that matter let's talk about all that right after this 400, 400, 400. yeah ah, the rival three wireless nice get up to 400 hours of playtime with two AAA batteries at 1000 Hz, that's plenty of time to own in games with a good shape, user-defined weight, and a mouse that is also Bluetooth ready. The SteelSeries Rival 3 Wireless, check it out below. All right, so physically the keyboard looks very familiar to what the K95 Platinum delivered. Large body, but not overly massive beyond the keycaps. Yes, it's a full-size keyboard with the additional keys on the left side for your macros and the Elgato Stream Deck integration. But that whole aluminum frame is pretty low profile. And I do appreciate their slight redesign on the sides to have that uh, light illumination that shines directly on the surface. In terms of RGB, this is the most Corsair have ever implemented on a keyboard, so we have three side, 44 zone, I believe, uh, RGB illumination that is fully adjustable and customizable. It is super vibrant, it is color accurate to what you set in the software, and it does look pretty. I'm gonna admit it when the light shines directly on the surface. The new wrist rest has a magnetic clasp for easy installation. The surface is slightly different to match their new angular ventilation pattern on their cases, so that is one of those design cohesive elements that I appreciate. Leatherette material on top, memory foam on the inside, it's a very comfortable wrist rest in general. The MIDI keys on the top right feel very familiar with an aluminum volume wheel that doesn't have much resistance, but it is much better than what Logitech offers with their G915, TKL, and full-size keyboards. The cable, as before, is super thick, and we have the dual USB ports, one for keyboard power, one for the additional USB pass-through. And of course, they found a way to build in some tempered glass on the gaming keyboard. It's right in the center, and it shows you the caps lock, different profiles, or whatever that you have activated in terms of Windows lock, and etc. All the keycaps on the keyboard, except for the G keys on the left, and the spare gaming keycaps are double shot PBT, which for such a premium keyboard is appreciated, of course. The texture on here feels slightly smoother than what I'm used to from 
my other PBT sets, especially coming from Razer. I do appreciate their new font, which isn't as bulky. It's sharp, it's clean. It's not as gamery that uh, what I'm seeing from Corsair on a regular basis. So all those aspects are going into the right direction. And below the keycaps are new optical mechanical switches from Corsair called the OPX. They actuate at one millimeter. Total travel distance is 3.2 millimeters with 45 gram actuation force and a really impressive 150 million lifespan keystrokes, making this the fastest gaming keyboard on the market currently because of the 4,000 hertz polling rate and also probably the longest lasting too. If you're familiar with MX speed switches, they kind of feel the same way in terms of having very short actuation point and uh, not as much travel distance as your normal mechanical switches, but they're also very light, just like uh, Razer's red linear optical switches too. So they're kind of in between and it's a really good in between. They feel very smooth coming up and down with a pretty pleasant sound profile, not as clunky and metallic sounding like we've heard with Razer uh, linear red opticals. And the last physical addition on the K100 is what's known as the IQ control wheel. When I first heard about it, I'm like, yes, I need this in my life with different macro controls, different built-in default functions that you can do, all types of cool things with it. But in reality, it's a little bit janky. First of all, my wheel has a bit of wobble, which is unfortunate for a $230 keyboard. Luckily, this doesn't seem to be an issue with Frank's keyboard and my replacement keyboard. So I must have just gotten uh, a poor sample over here. It is an aluminum wheel, just like the volume wheel. So there's a bit of a cohesion in terms of materials, which is nice. The built-in illumination around the wheel is absolutely gorgeous. But in terms of functionality, that's where I feel like it, it lacks a bit. So you click the IQ button in the middle to cycle between different functionalities, all of which are color coded. You can do basic things like change the illumination brightness. You can do track scrolling. You can record macros with it, switch applications, zoom and vertical and horizontal scrolling. Functionally, it is a bit limited and I don't see myself using this very often, not because it's in like an awkward position to, to reach. It's easy to reach with your left hand after the WASD area. It's just that you have to cycle between the different functionalities that are built in and there's no way to tell which functionality is being used aside from the color coordination on the actual IQ wheel. It would be fantastic if there was like a little on-screen pop-up that says that you're in the zoom mode, that you're in scrolling mode, that you're in switching applications mode, but outside of that, you have to remember and remind yourself on which uh, functions that you've enabled in IQ software. Also, this whole aluminum wheel isn't exactly tactile for a good user experience. You don't really have full precise control on how many scroll steps you are activating. It's also a bit slippery and it would be great if the wheel was textured or rubberized for a bit more control. In order to activate the 4000 hertz polling rate, you have to first go into the settings and enable that because by default, we're running at the 1000 hertz for better compatibility. Really the main highlights that Corsair briefed us on about this new Axon hyperprocessor and the 4000 hertz polling rate is that we have up to 200 profiles that can be saved on the keyboard, which is kind of crazy and totally unnecessary. And you can do up to 20 layers of hardware lighting. So you can customize the keyboard to whatever you want and you don't need IQ running for those hardware lighting layers to take effect. Overall, this gives Corsair the bragging rights from the marketing perspective of having the fastest gaming keyboard on the market. But in reality, it will matter not today and not for 60 Hertz displays, but maybe two years from now when we're gaming at 500 Hertz monitors, uh, maybe a thousand Hertz displays. And that's when the keyboard is becoming more consistent and your keystrokes are not landing in between polling rates. So your overall experience should be more, more consistent. As of now with my 200 Hertz display, 
I can't really feel the difference between a thousand hertz polling and 4,000 hertz polling rate on the keyboard, but I am using the 8,000 hertz polling with a Razer mouse. And that's when things get a bit interesting because I feel like my overall peripherals are more responsive and I can trust them more of landing my shots because of the optical switches, both on the mouse and the keyboard, where things and those actuations are not landing in between polling rates. For 1% eSports elites, yes, 4,000 Hertz, you want the best of the best. In terms of lighting customization, I appreciate that we have per key lighting, all the 44 zones that are available to us. You can customize them to whatever you want. It would be great if IQ had different zone presets for illumination. Uh, we do have obviously all the rainbow effects and all types of customization in the effects panel, but the zones, all those zones are user defined and nothing through presets. In order for you to select the exterior zones, you have to literally hold control, drag, and uh, carefully select those boxes for illumination and create that as a new layer. Also, me and Frank were talking about IQ and how it almost needs to get revamped for 2020 because the K100 is a fantastic premium keyboard that feels right for right now, but all the driver stuff, like changing the 4,000 Hertz polling rate is in the settings, everything else is on the left side inside the, the dashboard. Uh, and it would be awesome if IQ was simplified because working with the different lighting layers, working with hardware lighting on all the actions and the IQ control wheel, it seems a little bit clunky. I feel Corsair did a fantastic job with the new optical mechanical switches, the OPX that is going to be competing with things that are coming from Razer and from SteelSeries 2. For full-size keyboard lovers, what do you think of the K100? Does it meet your expectations for like a flagship $230 premium keyboard from Corsair in 2020? I would say so. Uh, because of the 4,000 Hertz polling rate in terms of future proofing, in terms of having that Axon uh, hyperprocessor inside for insane storage compatibility and potential. But yeah, stay tuned for my comparison between the K100 and what Razer is offering in terms of the full size keyboard, because those are still the most popular format for keyboards. And I guess that makes sense. I would still love to see a T keel version from Corsair that brings all these features. I'm kind of disappointed with the IQ wheel, but everything else about the K100 satisfies me perfectly. All right, guys, I'm Dmitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.